Okay, uh, I'm actually filling in for someone on this consortium in the 2581, but I have been somewhat involved uh, with it in the, in the sidelines. Uh, so I have a short presentation that will introduce you to what's going on. Uh, and basically, uh, the 2581 is a data format. It's not software, it's a format. Uh, and it's used to communicate a lot of information. We'll touch base with some of that information uh, within the slide set. I do want to give you a little bit of a history of data transfer and why are we looking for another format, why are we doing what we are doing as a group, who the players are and some of the uh, history of data transfer, the good, the bad and the uglies and Clint Eastwood is not part of that. All right. The first thing I want to talk about is, a little bit about is the design process. Ba basically. The uh, design process, you design your board, you do your, uh, then you pass it out to a prototype manufacturing, and then from that you might be doing some in-circuit tests and assembly, it goes right on through the whole product development cycle. And what would be nice is if we had one data highway that covered everybody's needs. And it's a two-way street. You, you, place something down, some information, someone needs that information to take it off, they put new information on. Uh, as we stand right now, every one of those evolutions have their own formats, their own data uh, uh, formats, some is paper, some of it's electronic, etc. So we really would like to have something that's more economical. And let's see what happens. The process involves uh, today a multi-format uh, delivery. What that means very simply is that I have a Formats for everything. I have the RS-274X for, for the Gerber files coming out. Uh, I have maybe some excellent drill files in their format. I have the D356 uh, format for the electrical test. And maybe I have the drawing information for the 2511 and ASCII, PDF, HPGL, JPEGs, all these different formats. And, and every time you have a different format, you have to have a translator to create the format and then you need something to to create it back into the format that you need in a particular piece of equipment. So there's plenty of room for error and there are errors. Errors happen every day and, and uh, I remember at one point in time uh, we did analysis it was over over 250 million dollars a year goes down in the waste can because of poor data <coughs> transfer and that's basically poor communication downstream. So we've been chasing this thing for quite, quite a number of years, okay? And today, you know, we're trying to do more with less and, and, and data <coughs> transfer and errors and things like that are not helping us at all. Uh, the CAD companies have been very reluctant in the past to uh, apply any resources to post processors. They make money selling you the basic tool, all right? And uh, the basic, uh, uh, post processors are done by the entry level uh, programmer just to get used to using the tool and sometimes that data is just not not correct scale is off uh, elements are in the wrong place missing etc so while companies are undertaking do more or less they want to reduce reliance upon paper okay uh, we're looking to go more electronic data transfer we see in our shop we see a lot of electronic data uh, transfer just about all of our inputs coming electronically. Uh, we have many solutions, uh, but they all require custom extensions and, and they're costly to maintain. So at the OEM level, at the fabrication level, at the, you know, the, the contract manufacturers, all of those have their own specific requirements and, and we need to streamline that process somewhat. And it gets a little bit worse as well. Let me give you a little bit of a data transfer standard history. Uh, way back in 1970, I know half of you weren't born then, okay, but back in 1970, uh, IPC uh, put together this IPC D350 format. Uh, it was an intelligent version of Gerber format. Now, Gerber format is very simple. It's the least common denominator in data formats. It's used to drive a plotting machine. It's a proprietary format. It says, turn the light on, drag it over here, shut the light off. I just created a line on a piece of film. 
okay? Uh, we needed more information in the D350 series of formats added in the aperture list, added in a bunch of other items that was okay. But back in 1970, why it didn't really take off, it's very simple. The CAD companies did not want to support any kind of a format that would allow you to take your your work from my to, from this tool and put it into someone else's tool. They wanted to lock you on in. So they didn't support any kind of a, a data format that would allow interchangeability between CAD systems. That just that wasn't in their cards in 1970. In uh, 1980, the U.S. military adopted the mill standard uh, 275 design for the, for, for the boards and data transfer uh, in an attempt to also standardize <coughs> the information that's being placed out there. The IC, IEC in 1988, uh, they adopted the 350, and anything that goes internationally with the IEC usually gets their own number, their own numbering system, and a lot of times it's the same document that we have. I know at IPC, we, 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 we submit all of our documents to IEC for adoption, and, and, and they had the equivalent, uh, which is the 61182-1 in 1988 for that 350 document. Uh, in 1992 and 94, in that time frame, the JPCA, the Japanese Printer Circuit Association, uh, they created the CAD to CAD transfer. And they had different concepts for codes, uh, and, and that, that was uh, released in the IEC as well as an IEC 61182-10. And then we come up into nowadays, 1998, uh, IPC had the 25X, 1X series, the GenCam. Now, GenCam was a format, GenCAD was a format that was owned by a private organization. They donated it to the, intra, uh, into the industry. And the reason we selected that GenCAD format is because most of the electronic side of the business, the, the, the uh, uh, engineering side, was all, all in, in this particular type of format. And it would take very little for us to adopt the basic format and then add the things that were unique to the printed wiring board side of, side of the business. So back in 1992, we started, uh, I'm sorry, back in 1998, uh, we built that GenCam. We called it GenCam so people had a relationship to the, to the other one, the GenCAD product that was sitting out there. Uh, and then we formed some revisions on that, and, and then came the problem, okay? It's not on the slides, and I'll give you the problem. Uh, we had a company out there called Valor, and Valor created, uh, has the, uh, the cam station software for most of the board shops, about 85% market share worldwide. Uh, and they have a, a format called ODB++. Right? And it's a robust format, uh, and it's an intelligent format. It contains a lot of the database. The only thing is, it, it, it's, it's not really structured very well internally. Okay, number one. Number two, it wasn't as robust as GenCam. And number three, it was proprietary to Valor. Okay, whereas the IPC format is industry owned. It's developed by the industry and distributed by the industry and it's all free of charge. Okay, uh, uh, they, they went to, to uh, the NEMI organization and they had us put a hold on the GenCam product for five years. Okay, and uh, basically the marching orders are very <coughs> simple. Make a new format that makes ODB++ look like GenCam and then we could adopt it. So after all of that, and we enhanced it, we enhanced the formats, uh, and we came up with the 2581 series uh, in, in 2003. Uh, INEMI recommended that. 2011, we, we, we formed this consortia. And so now you have a, a 2581 series uh, formats that gives you the best world of Gen Came and OD++. We'll talk a little bit more about it as you go on, along the line. Uh, it eliminated the, the, uh, the dedicated company's ownership. However, uh, ODB++ still exists. Vala still exists under different names. We'll talk about that in, in a little bit. 
Um, they support the 2581. However, uh, they will modify their ODB output to kind of lock you into their, their types of, of thinking. And we'll go through the mergers and all that <coughs> stuff later on. But basically, then we have the consortium 2011. We'll talk more about that. Uh, this was the, what we were talking about a little earlier. We froze the, uh, uh, the revision for two years to let the CAD companies or to let the software writers write up the format. So let's face it, I have a format. You know what a format is? It, all of this is a structure, okay? Each one of these little squares on the ceiling could be a format. So maybe I'll take all of the whole information and put it in this square, like a mailbox. I'll put all the line information over there, I'll put the test information over here, and on and on, all structured format. So now, uh, if, if, if your company needs the whole information, you'll go to that particular box, you pull out the whole information. And if you need to do something, you put it in another thing, then the guy in the back, he needs that information, he pulls it out and puts something else in. So everybody knew where it is. It requires the care <coughs> system to be able to output all of the information within the file to the appropriate box in the mailbox, and then it, it involves uh, your, the, the manufacturer, the assembler, the tester, to have software that will also extract it from the appropriate box and then move on forward. That's basically a data, data uh, transfer uh, type of uh, roadmap. Okay. In the meantime, uh, the committees looked at looked at what was out there, and it looked like the XML type of description, data transfer description, would be taking hold. Okay. And then the World Wide Web Committee finally just locked in XML schema as a way that they were going to transfer all kinds of data. So we figured, let's for for an open source type of uh, a format, and then we're going to make the new version all XML schema based so that we're compatible with the rest of the world and everything else that's going on in data transfer. So that's what we did. And what that schema permits us to do, it allows us to look at the numerical, the angu angular, and other descriptions, and we can check for, for correctness through software compliance. So we're, we're, we're using the tools that everyone else is using in order to create yes. new data. Uh, data transfer software. Uh, the need for data, intelligent data transfer as we move on over the years is because we're trying to get more efficient. We're trying to get more efficient. efficient. We have much more complex uh, electronics that we're trying to uh, uh, document and transfer the data. So again, we want to have that intelligent data transfer. Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple of quickie items on what I feel this means to me, okay? Uh, let's compare it to Gerber. How many are familiar with Gerber? Most of you are familiar with Gerber. Okay, Ger Gerber being the least common denominator. W will Gerber tell you what the hole sizes are? I won't tell you what the hole sizes are, the tolerances, or the locations. Will Gerber tell you how many boards to order? How about the stack up? Will it tell you what the layer stack up is? What the copper is on each of the layers? Probably not. Will it tell you which conductors have controlled impedance? Will it tell you about the, 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 the bare board test fixture? What kind of fixture and all, everything about building that? Or, or, or the uh, uh, ICT test fixtures? We'll give you all the test vectors. And on and on and on. All of that information is, is information that we require someplace along development cycle. All right. The, the intelligent data transfer will contain all of that information. It will allow you to have all the information. You can segment it and only send the fabricator what he needs and the assembler what he needs, et cetera, or you can send the whole darn file. What's nice about it, it's good for archiving uh, your, your product for long term. Everything that's ne necessary to build that product would be in this archived file. So you can bring it back 20 years from now and duplicate what you had to do, as long as the materials and components are still available, obviously. So what's the uh, solution to the problem? The 2581 is a single source file containing the entire PCB structure. Everything from parts to ERP systems, CAD data, CAM data, models, you name it. Uh, the improvements over the existing formats, you have very rich schema defined, which defines all of the, the intricate parts of everything. Uh, it could support uh, part polarity, part orientation, 
uh, gives you consistent definitions, uh, improves the support for drilled and milled content, so blind and buried vias, back drilling, v-grooving slots, all that stuff is contained. You won't find that in a Gerber file at all. Okay, and a lot of that you won't find in an ODB plus file either. Okay, uh, 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 however, it's supposed to be totally robust. Okay, improve embedded components, stacked component support. It'll give you improved support for your functional and JTAG and ICT. Uh, and it gives you automatic viewing with the, with the with, uh, viewing software, and, and Andy will show you that afterwards. He'll show you some demonstrations of that. Uh, summary benefits. I've taken this from several presentations that I didn't create, so, you know, I'm guessing at some of it, but we're, we're doing fine. Uh, the benefit summary is it's open, it's vendor neutral, and standards based. When I say it's open, it's owned by the industry. IPC is an industry based trade association. SMCBA is part of IPC, uh, they have association with it. So it's, it, it, you own it. If you see something missing, you want something, you just let them know, and it gets it gets placed in there. Whereas something that's private, if you want something, you need something, it has to make a business case to get it. So it wants to be an op open source. Uh, improves your efficiency in design, fabrication, manufacturing by pa by passing accurate data. You, you don't have to assume when you're not losing uh, a, a, a uh, an aperture list, something like that. Everything's coming out right directly from the data file. There's no misinterpretation. Okay. Uh, and results in lower cost, basically. Uh, your information transfer wants to go from what your CAD system is, is, is looking for all the way through to the electronic data transfer side. I'll just kind of skip this slide. There's a couple of slides in here that are necessary or not. Anyway, I have a CAD specific design, I have a CAD independent golden file, and manufacturing specific processes. The ideal ultimate goal is to create this data transfer and directly drive your end machine. I'll give you an example in, in a bare board test. Okay, we say you have to have a 356 file which defines the test, the, uh, test parameters for the, for, for the bare board tester. Uh, but the software that we send the 356 doesn't really drive directly the machines, the test machines. Maybe the new ones will accept it and drive it. <coughs> but basically what they'll do is they'll have a 356 <coughs> file that you gave them, and then they'll take the Gerbers that you gave them, they'll extract a net list, they'll compare that net list against the 356, and they'll make that net list look like the 356, and then they drive their machine. So we're trying to eliminate all of this conversion and driving and stuff like that. We want to drive it, ultimately, just drive it directly. It makes a lot, a lot of sense, I, I would think. Okay, uh, this is a very busy slide, and I'm certainly not going to point to the little letters because I can't see them. I'm sure you can't see them from the back. But basically, it's a, it's a roadmap for all the vendor merges. And I just want to focus on one set of merges for you as an example and, and why we're at this stage with the consortium. Okay, uh, you had uh, Valor with the ODB++, okay, and then uh, Valor was purchased by Menta Graphics. Okay, now Menta Graphics now owns, owns Valor. Now, uh, Valor was also supported by Cadence and several other CAD manufacturers. They all had Valor output, Valor helped them write it, do all that stuff like that. But when Menta Graphics took it over, they were a CAD manufacturer. Their competition is Cadence and the rest of those guys. So they immediately went to work to make it so that those other guys didn't have access to the right format because they wanted everyone to use the ODB that was new, the Menta format. Well, you know, Cadence and Zukin and everyone else got together and said, listen, you know, we're very nervous. We have a private company going to own the only data format that everyone's using. That's not really a healthy situation. We need to do something different. So they formed the consortium. And the consortium consisted of a lot of supplies. You'll see them all coming up on the next several slides. So we'll go up one more slide so at least you could be looking a little bit. Uh, they formed a consortium to adopt the industry standard of 2581 from IPC because it's owned by the industry. 
And, and in the consortium, they said, okay, what do we need to do to make this thing successful since we're adopting it? Number one, we have to make sure that the format itself coming out of a particular piece of equipment is accurate to the standard. It doesn't hiccup if there's something missing or something that's additional. Okay, we have to make sure that the, the software that does that is validated. We have to make sure that when it goes into the next piece of equipment or into assembly, wherever it's going, that the input software can accurately record and take from that database all the information that it needs. It doesn't hiccup if it doesn't see something or does something in a special way. They have to make sure that all happens. So when they adopted it, they adopted and they said, we're going to create the software, we're going to create the models, we need the industry to support an effort to iron out all of the data transfer stuff. So if you go, if you went to the last IPC conference down in, up in Schomburg, Illinois a few weeks ago, if you're going to PCB West on the west coast of, of the United States the week after next, you'll see they'll have a booth and they're going to be exchanging a design file that they create in Cadence. They're going to move it over to Zookin. They're going to move it out to, to Valor. They're going to move it up and down the whole product development system. Uh, uh, system. They can move them back and forth. And any hiccups or enhancements, they're taking control and they're making the recommendations to IPC committee so that we can roll the darn things in. So here we have an industry consortium that's sitting out there and, and basically it's a free consortium. There's, there'll be a slide in, in here how you can join and what the requirements are for joining because it's, it's a freebie thing. So you have different work working groups within the consortium, all right? And the whole purpose of that evolution is to develop proposals and work with IPC to extend the standard to new technology and methodologies, okay? And the leader for that is, is uh, uh, Gary Carter from Fujitsu. He's the lead in that particular working group, and Harris, NVIDIA, and Ericsson are all part of that particular working group. From the technical side, uh, you had, uh, you need to validate the 2581 files that were consumed by the tool. Uh, you needed to identify the areas that needed to be extended. And uh, uh, Cadence, Ed Aitchison, he's the lead downstream. Uh, uh, Adiva, Wise, Artwork Conversions, uh, Zukin, and EasyLogic are all part of that, that effort or that particular technical team. And then the awareness and promotion uh, will come from uh, published articles in all the publications at the, at the different conferences at PCB West, uh, Cadence, uh, uh, and, and, and Hermont uh, Shah is the lead, Zukin Downstream Intercept, Up Media, they'll all be down at, uh, down at, the, at the conference in the booth showing how this thing and demonstrating how everything is working. All right. Uh, who can join the consortium? It's open to any PC design supply chain company who's prepared to adopt the uh, consortium's goals and objectives. And that's just a slide talking about the goals coming up. Uh, and committed to the roadmap. It doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is make a public, station, uh, a public statement that says, listen, we support the 2581 and we're going to try to help pr promote it any way that we can. Either uh, uh, ask for our suppliers to uh, accept it in or, or, or put it, place it out, whatever the case may be. Uh, and you get your logo thrown on there, that type of thing. I mean, it's as simple as enough. You go up on a website and you, and you just uh, uh, you, you go ahead and join it. All right? Uh, act actively support that 2581. You, you talk it up in your DFMs and your FAB, you ask for it. Uh, your, your CAD company, if it's not one of those, your board suppliers, anybody else down the stream, if you ask for it and you ask for it long enough and, and, and you threaten to not give them the job or something like that, they'll put pressure on their suppliers to give them the support, uh, the, the, the software support that's necessary. All right. The mission statement for the technical working group is simple. The goal of the validation process team is to define and document the validation of the 2581 export against current exported data formats like Gerber, ODB++, NC Drill, etc. So we want to validate against those particular individual programs, make sure that it truly replaces those programs to ensure that 2581 data is identical and complete for the fabrication, assembly, 
and the test of printed circuit boards to promote and ensure the industry adoption of that particular standard. We, you know, with the 350 format and all the previous efforts, we really never had an industry consortium promoting it and pushing it and trying to do a lot of the work. This is the first time in many, many years that I've ever seen where the industry is actually getting behind it and pushing it. And they had selfish means because they didn't want one company to control everything. They wanted the industry to stay with it. And that team validation flow uh, from the creation tools, whether it be Cadence, Allegro, Zookin, or Intercept, or Altia, whatever it may be, they will output the files in Gerber or the 2581 ODB++ NC. They'll output all the files and then the validation tools for, from Adiva or about Dan, uh, Wise or Downstream, or those guys, they will actually read the data in and see if it works, see if it's doing the right thing, okay? Uh, the technical team, uh, will, uh, the comparison process is going through the, the 2581 out through the CAD tool, output individual files back through the CAM tool and keep doing that type of, of setup. So their roadmap, their roadmap is, is very simple. Create and test the suite going to the push and test available all the way out to board fabrication. So you can start from the beginning out to the end. It's as simple as that. Okay, test cases and viewers. You'll notice there's a link, you know, you notice there's a link sitting up here, okay? And that, that link will get you up to the test cases and viewers. You can see the results, what they had, and you can download the viewers. I think Andy's gonna be showing us one of the viewers. Is that correct, Andy? Yeah. The viewers of how, how it's working. And you can see what was done with the cadence to NVIDIA and Fujitsu. They've been transferring files back and forth between all of these groups, which really makes it pretty good. Okay, current consortia uh, 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 members uh, sitting up there. You'll see media companies. You'll, you'll, you'll see NVIDIA, Cisco, Intercept Technologies, Harris Corporation, and, and growing, much growing since, since then. I mean, my company's not even up there yet. We haven't done that yet, all right? And it's just a matter of just saying, hey, yeah, I support it. And they know that I support it. And in the next several slides, try to give you some kind of a brief description uh, of, of what's going on in there. You have a, 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 a standardization strategy uh, for your generic stuff, your administrative data, your drawings, your bay board tests, all the way down to library symbols, alternatives, and how complex the data is for those. Very simple data is just real basic, everything that we have today. All right, complexity B will now go with the 2581 series where we're adding all the extra information here. And then it's a, a 2511 series that's supporting that with the documentation, et cetera. Okay, and what they did with the segmentation concepts, you have all your bill of materials, hierarchical uh, conductors, your drilling, routing lays, all that information. And what they did, they said, okay, you have design, fabrication, assembly, and test. Who who contains that information or, re, or, or provides it or uses it and get the yeses and nos, so I try to give them a little bit of a roadmap of what's going on. Uh, they all adopt one standard viewing convention that we've had for many years. You view it from the, from the face you're looking at and go on down, one, two, three, four, five, six, as you're moving on down. That is the viewing convention that's been around for many, many years. Uh, the standard and use it dictionaries have been defined. We had to define things like butterflies and circles and contours and rectangle rounds, rectangle corners. All of that standard user dictionaries have all been defined as something standard. Because, you know, when you're dealing with electronic format, you're dealing with computers, you have to have a common name when you're transferring different data. And everyone has to have the same thing. If you're going to have a slightly different name and you're going to have a slightly different name, we can't really get software to, to, to correlate slightly different names. It has to be the same thing so that everything moves on down the line. You know how it is. You type the wrong letter, the computer shows it back to you, says just spell it right. Okay? So it's the same type of thing. And they cover all the different types of primitives that you might see out there. And we can keep on adding it. All right, we can keep on adding it. Uh, the new tool schema that was released in the first quarter of 2012, all right, and they're still working on enhancing it. 
And then the last slide that we have is the standards hierarchy. Here are your data formats, the 2581 series, the generic requirements for the board descriptions, then the administrative and manufacturing data in the, in the two, 82, the implementation design characters in 83, the 84 is the board data description, and it keeps on going on down the line. Right? And your documentation is 26 guys down that way. So there's an awful lot that's in there. I'll give you just a brief snapshot of what's going on, because I, I know it's late. I'm, I'm kind of done with mine. We're going to transfer it over to, to Andy. Andy will now show you the actual viewer of the software, viewing a data file from 2581, and I don't know what else you're going to do. So you do the talking. Did anybody notice what was seriously missing? On the consortium members, the uh, yes, the 600-pound gorilla of the CAD sys, CAD vendors, better graphics. They're not in the consortium. Is Aldi even good? Sorry. I, I, I need to correct that. Uh, Meta graphics is missing from the slide, but they were forced into joining the consortium to protect their interests. I don't believe that they're providing any resources to further that. They just want to see what it's going so they can counter it somewhere. But they are part of the consortium. Oh, I stand okay. corrected. Fantastic. What about Altium? Are they part of it? Uh, I, Name thought, was missing. I thought they were, but I didn't see them up there, so I really don't know. Okay. So that's a good thing, right? Because traditionally, as Gary said, traditionally, the vendors didn't want to do this. Right? Because I could take an Altium file and put it into Expedition and vice versa. The vice versa, oh, no, no, no. Uh, it costs 120 grand or whatever it is costs, and Altium is four or five grand or whatever it is. They don't want that tool to go down there because that will do 90% of what this tool does. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of issues about how this is not a good thing is from a cat vendor's point of view. Anyway, we uh, don't have lift off. Yes, we did. Of course we did. I'm going to have a quick look at the standard. This is free. Uh, you can download it from, a, from the consortium. Somewhere in there was a... Um, um, Somewhere in there was a, um, a link to the consortium, and you can download this stuff from there. The standard is open, free, available to anybody. And if you look through it, typical standard. Right. Right. You got that? Ask questions later. You getting this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, this is really great. I've had a quick look at this. I don't know it in great detail, but it's fantastic. Let me quickly describe how this works. We have a file. It's a text file. It's basically a text file, XML, very well defined. I have a pad, and I define a pad, and it's got such a certain diameter. And down here I have a pad that's a rectangle, and I define that as a circle one, rectangle one, something else one, something else one. Further down, somewhere down there, I define an integrated circuit. And it says, give me 14 of pad one, and put them there and there and there and there, and there and there and there and there and so on, so on. So now I've got a little group down here that's, that calls up something up there, calls it up, insta instantiates it 14 times and says, here's an IC 14 pins. Okay, and further down in the file it says, put one of these down there at this location. Okay, not only do you put it there, but rotate it 90 degrees and flip it. Okay, so what you're doing is you're describing something once and calling it up multiple times. Okay, if you think about that system, that's almost infinitely extensible. Right? Whenever I get a different pad shape, and there's a whole bunch of them, as you saw, if I get a different pad shape, I can just slot it in there, call it by a unique name, and then just call it up every time I need it. Okay, so the, the people that thought through this thing, I think, I think did a really brilliant job. So it's really great, and the standard is free. This business rotation is a big issue, okay? If I pick something up out of a tape this way and I rotate it 90 degrees, did I rotate it not minus 90 degrees or plus 270? <coughs> what happens if I put it on the bottom <coughs> side of the board and rotate it 90 degrees? Did I go this way or did I go that way? This is not a trivial exercise, okay? This is defining it, right? And, make, and casts it in stone, if you like, so that there are no possibility of errors. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's, that's, the, that's the standard. You can call it up, it's free. Have a look at it. Okay, I'll have a, let me, let me show you the file itself. Oh, I digress. I need to digress. I, I got so wrapped in this thing that I had to show it. Okay, 
0201, 0201, 0201, 0201, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0001, 0
you've been looking at this for three weeks, right? Everything's perfect, the DRCs are clean. You call up the GURB, it's just for one final check, and the very first thing you see is an error. Boom! Right there. Okay, you see things that a GURB editor that you have missed in your, vent, in your CAD system right, because of the way that you're looking at things. You're looking at fresh eyes when you're looking at a GURB file because you're just looking at one layer, generally. Looking at two layers is, is, is fairly complex and difficult to, to grasp. So suddenly you're looking at one layer with fresh eyes because you haven't seen it this way before. And that's where you start to pick up little strange things that the DRCs did not pick up. And we will get viewers like this that will actually do that for us also. Right, we'll be able to turn things on and off that looks at assembly information, looks at, uh, at, CAD, at um, fabrication information, test information. Should be able to isolate all of those things independent of our CAD system. Right, because now we're going to look at it fresh eyes yet again. And these viewers, no doubt, will also check the file, that 44 megabyte file that's this, this, this one, 44 megabytes. It will go through all of that to make sure the syntax is correct. Okay, and if the syntax is correct, then it's going to go downstream <coughs> without any problems. That's the plan. Okay. Um, there's not much more to say with this because it's, uh, it's basically an extension of what we do with CAD, only much better. Now we've got the information, one big file, and that's all there is. And I don't know, I'm not sure about the segmentation, I don't know that these, these viewers do that. But what I should be able to do is say, take, extract out of here only the information for the board fabricator. Right? Because if you think about it, this entire file can go to a competitor and he can make your product. Right, in there, in there. yes, ma'am? Uh, I, I think the segmentation and export that you're looking for really comes from the, the CAD side. The CAD this side? This is just allowing you to view the file that you output. So if you, if you output only the fab information, then you'd be able to view that. If you output only the assembly information, you should be able to view the assembly information. Ah, so the CAD vendor is going to say, click, you can click on a button that says FAB, and it'll generate a 2581 file for just the fabrication. Correct. At this end, not at this end. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so if you, yeah? Um, just on that, is it, is it, my, uh, is it possible or is, is, is it intended that this file format be the native description of the PCB that your CAD program is actually using. Um, not explain it can be it can be used that way. Yeah. At the moment, right? If you if you have let's say Matic Graphics or Altium, Altium has its own structure. Yeah. Right. So the the way that Altium describes its database, it, it appears in schematic files, PCB files, and then there's some background files too that, that sort of to extract some sort of information. So it has a way of describing the way it works. Right. And Metagraphics has the same sort of thing, but in a totally different way. And Zookin and, and Cadence, etc. and so forth. So none of them are compatible. Those native file formats are not compatible. What this is going to do is it's going to extract the information in a format that everybody can use. In a neutral format, which is text-based, XML-based, which people can use worldwide because it's well-defined. So in, ter in terms of what, what you're trying to say is it converts a CAD file to a neutral file, or it can do. Right. PCAD years and years ago had a, a, what they call the neutral file format and it was a completely text-based file, it was, it was fairly hierarchical also and you could take that and you could manipulate it any way you wanted because it was done in text. Okay. But there were no translators to translate that neutral file format into something different, into a different CAD system. But this goes a long way to that. So if, uh, if you can generate a file that carries the whole thing then that becomes a file that somebody can manufacture your board from. Not yeah, just your I, board I, I guess the point I'm um, thinking about is, could you take one of these, if you had the complete um, description, mm -hmm. could you take it into a CAD system, manipulate it, change components, whatever, and then send it off to the manufacturer? Yes. Right. Yes. Hang on, there's, just, there's a proviso, there's a caveat. Okay, let's say I'm sitting at Altium. Okay, and Altium's very happy at, to supply an output of 2581. Right? But it may say, no, I won't let you bring in a 2581. Okay, suddenly the, the whole business of translating from one CAD system to another falls apart. Right? Altium just might do the, an input also because they'd be quite happy to snatch work away from the expedition, for example. Right? But I, I can almost bet my house on the fact that, ex, that Metagraphics won't have an importer. Right? Happy to give an exporter, that's fine, right? Because that's all downstream stuff. An importer, maybe not. 
Yeah. Let me Excuse just me. add to that. Okay. Uh, at, at the conference, you'll see where they created a file in Cadence and they moved it over and read it into Zookin to do the changes that you're asking about. And they took the Zookin file and read it back into Cadence. So That's they've so got importers. Oh, yeah. They're, they're importing back and forth. Totally. We, are, totally. we are talking purely at um, a manufacturing level rather than schematic capture level. I mean, the, this file does not actually incorporate the, what we regard as a human readable schematic. Actually, that's a good point. Because it's only the production files, the assembly files, the test files. So it's actually an output format. It's not a true CAD format. And it probably, I assume, loses a whole lot of intelligence that are built into the like parts and the design. That like design rules. All the design rules, all that sort of stuff, and keep outs and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. They built in their parts. Or, well, all the key bows, all that stuff, that's all part of 2581. All that information is in 2581. The only one I'm not certain about is the schematic information itself, just a straight schematic. There's nothing in here about schematics. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't see anything in that. That may be that other 25 series thing. 2583 or 13 or something, right. yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure of that. But I know from the board side, all you can archive total construction, including all of the uh, test pictures, everything involved with manufacturing, assembly tests, all your test specs coming out of your CAE system, are all captured within the format to be able to drive your, 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 your ICT tests and everything else. So it does, as, as if we're talking about an archive format, does it also capture things like 3D mechanical models, because that's part of the archive, because the mechanical engineers are going to need to sit there and deal with that. So is the format extent is it, does it currently cover that, or is it by, I, 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 I can't answer that. No, no. Yeah, I'm not sure about, uh, almost certainly have a step file reference somewhere in there, I'm sure. I, I could do a search, but it'd take too long. Um, you're right about schematics, it's something I hadn't thought of. Um, maybe it's not the all things to all people that we thought it might well, be. Well, I, I'm not positive that it doesn't, but just not not. Mm, I didn't see anything like it. Yeah. Anyway, it's a big file. Um, let me just see whether that thing's finished its ruminations. There it goes. Right, I've collapsed it down to the top level. Okay, so there's two lines in that top level. If I if I unfold it for the next one, uh, I think I have to go to there. Right, I spent another half an hour waiting. This laptop is slow. Right, what I've done there is I've I've actually uncollapsed it. One, shut up. Okay. Here we go, things like content, role function equals, I'm not sure what that means, function mode full, level one, step name PCB, layer reference top, layer reference ground two, layer reference L10, obviously not in order, etc. and so forth. Coming down here, we've got a dictionary standard equals inch, entry standard circle one, now we're starting to descri describe primitives. Okay, ID circle underscore one, it's a circle of diameter that Right, we defined inch up here, this is inch. Okay, circle two is that many inches. Right. So, Keep once, so once again, we've missed an opportunity to actually get the world onto a single standard. Yeah. Are you trying to tell me <laughs> that we here are going to tell the United States to adopt metric? <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I, think the, I think the simple logic for this is if you find everything in units of angstroms or nanometers or whatever you want to, yes. you can at least get exact inch measurements. If you just find things in inch measurements, you can't bring it back to exact. Gary, could I just point out that John is a stirrer? <laughs> I, I, do want to, I, I do want to say one thing about yeah. May. Okay, one thing I do want to clarify, the, the documentation committee that's doing all the documentation, that, uh, and it's not part of these slides, they are going through hammering out all the, the, the naming conventions and everything else for the, from, from the schematic drawings down to the bad drawings, assembly drawings, all of that documentation side in, in preparation for the 2581 committee to be able to now take that on in. So, so I, 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 I'm positive that the schematic is not there yet, but it's ah. all that information is being okay. Formatted in such a way so that the consortium can then take it and start start working this stuff in. So it's working pro in progress. The more I'm thinking about this, I I know what's going on with that other with that other group, and uh, I'm sure that you'll get there eventually in the metric and the, and the conversions day. I'm sure that's an issue that's trying to deal with some way, shape, or form. Right. Okay. 
But, but this, is the, this is typical of the structure of the way this file works. So you've got circles, and if you keep going down further, you, get, uh, you come to polygons, right? Here we have a, a, a shape, and this is what we're calling that shape. Okay, for, for reasons, I'm not quite sure why that happens. It's a contour, which means I don't know what. Polygon, that means start there, keep going with those segments, and, and end at the same point. I think that's the same thing. And that finishes that section. And then I go to another circle, 13, 14. Somewhere down here are rectangles. Uh, there's a rectangle by centre. Okay, this, the rectangle centre is there, and the height is, or the width is that, and the height is that. And so they're describing all these basic real primitives. We, we saw a slide of some of those. And if you keep going down here further, and further, and further, and further, you come to the bill of materials. Uh, you come to things like a net. Right, there's a net name that has a net name of that. It has a net point, X and Y, is a layer of references bottom, right? That's referring to a de layer description that was up in the top of the file, etc., etc., and so forth. So it describes nets, and it picks up shapes, right? It picks up that shape which we described up there somewhere. Okay, so it's, it's calling all those shapes up by that net name. And somewhere down here is a bill of materials. It'll start from the primitives and work its way up. The primitives, the pad stack, the pad stacks, the components, the arrays, and it keeps on working its way up. Yeah, I, 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 somewhere I've missed it, it's up there somewhere. So this is, what have we got here? Right, 1,034,976 lines. Right, so this is not a trivial file. Okay, if you look at a typical, it's, it's closing off all brackets of the hierarchical structure right at the end here. So if you look at this, there's level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for all I know, there's other levels further up. Okay. So that's basic, the sort of, sort of it. But you know, if I open a Gerber file, uh, we've looked at Gerber files before, a whole string of X and Y coordinates, some of them with, with leading zero suppression, trailing zero suppression, X number of decimal points, uh, digits after the decimal point, etc., etc. There's not much different. Right? It's all text based and it's just in a different format and describing a whole lot more stuff far smarter than any Gerber file I ever saw, right, which started 30 years ago, turn a light on, draw it, and, th and then turn it off again. It's pretty dumb. Are there any questions for my limited knowledge? Right. Yes, John? The, the um, bill of materials, is it, is it a, um, I might call a smart bomb that includes, for example, as, a, as an OEM, my approved vendor list, or is it simply um, uh, more of a, a CAD library generic, uh, this is a 1 in 914 diode, and, uh, and the see, I told vendors for that component are in some other file. Yeah, see I told you there is a stir. Oh, oh here we go, sorry. I don't want to make light of what you're saying because you, you are quite right, right? There's, there's, the bugger is bringing up questions I haven't <laughs> even thought of. There's a... All bomb. Let me see if I can find another one of those. The simple answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does all of that. This to one of the above. Yeah. yeah. It gives you all the source. You know what else they'll let you do that you can't do today? You can take two different boards, <coughs> mess them together to the fabricator to put on one panel. Right now, if you send a fabricator two different files, say I want them both on the same panel, they won't do that. They will call off two separate jobs. But you can nest it together and send it there, and it's treated as one unit, and you build it all together at the same time, and it'll allow you to nest yeah, it. Yeah, that's good. I came up to the bomb, there's the, there's the bomb reference, right? This bomb name is All Bomb. There's a header and a revision and a step reference. I'm not quite sure what that means. And then further down here, it says, it, it looks at specific components. Okay, reference designated name, LE1. Do you want to populate it? Yes, we do. Okay, and somewhere down there is maybe false as well. Um, and you can keep coming down to C1, C3, C1, C5, etc. So it's calling up, a, it gives you a quantity, it gives you a number of IOs. Why that's important at the bottom, I'm not totally sure. Category electrical, that's probably really important for some reason or other. This is the part number, right? That looks like a, fa a manufacturer's part number. And, and there's a package reference, and that's the footprint that we're going to use, and that is described up there somewhere. Sorry? Go back up a, a little bit. You, 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 
go down. Yeah. Okay, she says a lead rope, definition source coming from a lead rope. Okay. So they even identifying the source where it came from. Where it came from, okay. I guess that's important. Well, it's probably important. But if it's a neutral file format, it doesn't really matter where it came from, does it? It doesn't matter. There, there, there you are. That's the short story. And watch this space. I wouldn't be surprised if in a year's time we'll actually be doing this, using it. That indicates that the papers can extend this format with whatever custom uh, entities they need? I would think so, yeah. You, you look at those primitives. We looked at some of them. Gary had a slide that showed some primitives. You know, ob ob oblongs, rectangles, ovals, a whole bunch of stuff. Sure. Um, there's no reason why I couldn't invent widget, which is something else. Right? There were, there's capacity in here for a polygon, so you can make any shape that you like. Call it whatever you like, provided it's a unique name, and then you call it up any time you want. Very, I, very extensible. This, this is this hierarchical stuff. You can slot stuff in anywhere you like. <coughs> what are you stirring about now, John? Beauty of standards, there are so many to choose from. Precisely, <laughs> that's exactly right. But when but are we going to get purchased and integrated into this? So they like their own database. It's in there already. No, yeah. they're not using this, they're using their own database. Oh, they're not using the designators and crap like that. I mean, everybody else means that, not them. Okay, traditionally, right, you have uh, the CAT system and the development team, and over there is operations. And operations want a whole different way of doing things. Right, so you have some translators of some sort. I would imagine I'd give them this file and somewhere somebody's writing software to convert it to that to their format. Right? Until they accept this as a, as a definitive art, article also. But you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, management, uh, what are they, ERM, ERM, ECM, can't remember. A whole bunch of uh, different types of software that will, uh, a company can use to control its purchasing, control its, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that runs the company. Whereas over here is the R&D group that does the development, and over there operations make the things in, in volume. Right? And there's always been a divide, well, always been a divide, and sometimes a really big divide between the two. It's the old over-the-wall stuff, you remember we used to do that? With assembly and fabrication, we don't do that anymore. But this is not going to solve that no. whole problem, because this doesn't have, doesn't contain the group end But you know, there are attributes, right? You can attach an attribute to your parts that he's your, com your company part number. And as soon as you've got that, that key, that can key into the, the database that's over there. Right, so it's extensible in that sense that you can put in attributes, your own attributes if you want, right, that will link into your system. Is there any way we can convince the um, prime component vendors to use this common package numbering scheme? And we felt, for, for one moment, we felt about, about laughing. 15 years ago, I thought we were heading that direction, and all of a sudden, they invented MLF, so we gone and it, well, and it, you know, it's interesting you ask that because we're, we're going through a big deal now with this, with, with, with the uh, uh, where the pin one is, okay? And you're getting all the different standards organizations. Uh, three of them work, the other two don't. And uh, I, I, I think we were talking about maybe uh, trying to incorporate one way to be consistent, and then if you're using one of the oddball ones, then you know you have to make from the consistency because it's obvious at this point in time we can't satisfy the world world organizations because they're not consistent themselves between genetic and, and everyone else is just not, not consistent. Well, you know, you see, you get this feeling that if you sort of think about the ramifications of what's happening here, we're down at this level and we need to be at that level, right? If we're going to sort of start incorporating everybody that's in the loop of the electronics industry as such. Okay, and, and this business of control within a company is, is part of that issue. Right, so when you get DigiKey part numbers, and then you get uh, Element 14 part numbers, and then you get a manufacturer's part number, and then you've got equivalents, and you've got alternatives, right? And, and they, the, the meeting is slightly <coughs> subtly different. Suddenly there's a can of worms that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right, sooner or later, and possibly long after I'm dead, this might all come together. <coughs> but let me tell you, this, this first step is a really good worthwhile step. But you know, you know all your concerns and things. If, if you, you want it on the website there, I, I think you have something. Just you put the concerns in there that the meeting looks at. She was we missed that. We could put that in. You know, put it in the queue. You know, it's, it, it's as simple as that because it's industry owned. It's just not putting it into the queue, uh, and it has nothing to do with any kind of business case or anything because it's, there is no business case. You need it. You need it. Good idea. Yeah. So what it needs is support, right? So if your CAD vendor doesn't do this, so 
I, I need this. I want to give it to me. Give it to me yesterday. Okay, and they'll say, probably. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. They're, 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 there's vested interests involved. So if it's if it's really easy to use one CAD system to get a board made, and this guy doesn't do that, and you have to go through all these hoops again, this guy's going to be out and left out in the cold sooner or later. Okay, so I think that's there's good, there's a strong groundswell, much much more than we've had before. Yeah, because of the consortium. The exactly. The consortium is the first time you've ever seen them all getting behind something like that. And yeah. I think that's very encouraging. Right. It was. It was. In fact, GenCam fell apart. Not didn't fall apart. But GenCam sort of came to a grinding halt because ODB Plus Plus had the market share, and GenCam was trying to do the right thing. And getting the two together was fantastic. And everybody said, "What a great idea." Valor said, "No, we're going to keep the format <coughs> proprietary." We'll give you what we've got, but we want to be able to change it. You can't do that with an industry standard. Okay, so they butted heads and eventually they went to NIST and NIST said, right, this is the way we're going to do it. So the two come together and now we've got a good system. And a system that people are getting behind. Wonderful. Bravo. I should turn this off. No, no, no. Why? Don't come in. Sorry.